Welcome to ATX LED. We manufacture low voltage DC lighting, offering perfect dimming and advanced features without high costs. This is part one of a two part video. Today we discuss rough in and part two is about trimming out the lighting after paint is finished. Please also see our detailed wiring instructions online. This method is ideal for flat, puck, recessed or surface mount fixtures with tunable white options. Vanity lights, pendants, chandeliers, and wall mounted sconces use the same method with Edison type bulbs in direct current. We will discuss roughing in to prepare the site before sheetrock to be ready to receive the lead at trim after all painting is completed. Following this method, we establish a DC lighting standard for product using the elegant distributed DC lighting solution that we pioneered. We offer both simple fixed color LEDs or user adjustable color temperature models. You can decide this at trim. Our wall switches fit into standard blue wall boxes and appear familiar to casual users. This particular room will have eight lights and it is about 300 square feet. For now, it is undecided which type of light will be chosen at trim. This can be decided later. A typical bedroom of 160 square feet is well lit with just four fixtures and six watts each. Larger rooms will need more fixtures. Our high output DL120 fixture is best for high ceilings and our gimbal LED for directional control. Our six watt fixtures are four inches in diameter in the ceiling. Our rough end allows those holes to be cut by the sheetrock screw without damage to the wiring. The general rough in plan of action is to run a wire loop starting at the wall box, going to each light, then returning to the wall box. The reasoning behind the loop is to allow the project to be upgraded to tunable white after sheetrock. One innovative invention by ATX LED is that we can power tunable white fixtures with just two wires. If there is absolutely no intent for tunable white, the loopback can be omitted at a cost savings of about a dollar. The loop is for each group of one to five lights. Wiring in this manner leaves the option open for each type of lead fixture at trim. This innovation does require that at trim, we need to know which direction each wire goes. So while you are roughing in, you will need to identify each wire position for whether it is coming or going to the switch or from another LED. In this video, I use electrical tape to mark the upstream and downstream directions. Starting in spring of 2021, we supplied the sticker shown to improve clarity. The more diligent you are at this stage, the more time you will save a trim. Use a sticker and run the wire into the holes one through four to indicate where the wire goes or comes from. Those slots on the outside will be needed to trim, keep them free. We will start with our four inch ceiling box called the C box four. This is used just like any other ceiling box. You can use nails or hanger bars. In this case, we will mount them on hangers. Next step is installing the hanger bars in the ceiling joists. And now to install a two gang electrical wall box. Typically we find two kinds of ceiling joists, flat two by four truss and vertical two by six or larger beams. Our C-Box 4 hanger bar data sheet explains how to get perfect alignment of the C-Box 4 with the future sheet rock. You want the bottom of the box to be about 3 8 inch below the joist, enough for the sheet rock team to see the bulge, but clearly higher than the finished drywall. Our wall switches can power between one and 10 fixed color LEDs or up to five tunable white LEDs. In this example, we will be ready for either type of light. Since a room of this size typically has more than one entrance, we will pre-wire to allow a three-way switch to control the lights from the other entrances. In fixed color, a single wall switch will power up to 10 lights and one or more momentary switches add 
three-way on-off and dimming. Pendants allow 10 Edison-type light bulbs. Insulations of up to six switches controlling 60 LEDs, all operating in sync, is no problem. One side note, for chandeliers with up to 32 bulbs, please see our online FAQ. Time to start with wire. I'm running jacketed solid 18 slash 2 here, but jacketed AWG 20 slash 2 is also acceptable. First, I'm finding a comfortable path for all the wire, making sure I have plenty of length. Then I come back and pull a 10 to 20 inch loop into each seating box. Being sure to identify each loop's upstream and downstream ends with tape or by following the sticker. Let me note that it is the installer's responsibility to correctly pull the wire. Please use the same best practices that you would use for any other type of wiring. Please never use aluminum wire and avoid sharp edges. Don't share any holes in wood with 120 volt wiring. I use the wire marking method at the wall box for up and down loops. In the ceiling, Please leave the loop uncut. Simply stuff it into the seating box until it is time for trim. For info, ATX LED has a work light product called Ready at Rough. It's on our website. The Ready at Rough product uses all the wiring installed at Rough to provide work light before drywall, during drywall insulation, and through final paint. In addition to lighting up the project, should any tradespeople damage any wires, it is known before final a really big cost saving. You can see here that the completed wire run start at the wall box, makes a loop at each seating box, then returns to the wall box. I do the same procedure for this second group of four lights. In this example, the two sets of loops are in one box but in a room with multiple doors, each door would have one up and one down loop. The final rough end step is to make the home run from the low voltage panel to the wall box. This is typically an 18 slash five solid core wire. Home runs may be run up to hundred feet. Note that the power electronics is typically installed in the low voltage panel at trim not at rough. To learn more about the low voltage panel, please check out that video on our channel. We use 18 slash five wire to provide up to 100 watts of power on the red and blue wires per NEC 2017 class two, plus an insulated earth ground for static protection on the green and our home automation bus is on the white and yellow wires. With that, rough-in is complete. Take the opportunity to be sure all the wires are secured, tuck any loose ends into their respective boxes. If you would like to light up your project now, please see the Ready at Rough for more information. Please watch part two, where I will demonstrate how to set up different circuit types and complete the wiring.